Hey guys, my name is Bagnetico and welcome back to my series of videos where we take video game systems, we clean them up, repair them if need be, and sometimes we mod them. And today we're going to be taking a look back at the Sega Saturn that we cleaned up the other day. This is the same one that I bought off eBay that was having a little bit of laser issues, but we went in there, make sure everything was cleaned up with isopropyl alcohol, make sure it was pristine, we replaced the battery, and the only thing we needed to do to fix the laser was replace the ribbon from the motherboard to the actual laser device. Thankfully, I didn't have to go on eBay and buy a whole new, a whole new laser unit of any sort. And luckily, everything worked just fine just with that ribbon. So now that we got this fixed, I ended up testing it just to make sure everything was working fine. I consider this system to be a completely working system. So now we can move on to the next step. Now, with the PlayStation, if you guys remember, I ended up installing an optical drive emulator, and that was called the X Station. And what it lets you do is take your game back up so you can put them into a micro SD card or an SD card and play the games off of that. That way you can preserve your discs. Now, we all know for the Sega Saturn, in fact, any kind of used game right now is completely inflated on eBay and on Amazon. So the solution I'm going to use for the Sega Saturn is very much the same. And what it's called, it's called the Fenrir Duo. This is also an optical drive emulator for the Sega Saturn. I went and ahead and grabbed the Duo version because it comes with two ribbons, one for the older version of the Sega Saturns and one for the newer version, the 21 pin of the Sega Saturn as well. So if you guys want to go that route, uh, there is individual ones, but the Duo I think is the best, the best bang for your buck because it's also the most updated board, I believe, as of this video. So the Fenrir Duo, again, lets you play your backup games from an SD card or a micro SD card, and it's much easier to install than the PlayStation X Station was because all you have to do is plug and play it there is no soldering involved this is an incredibly easy solution to play your backup so i'm really excited to go ahead and get this started if this is your kind of thing where somebody goes through cleans up systems repairs them if need be and sometimes even mods them make sure you hit that subscribe button that way you're notified every time i post a video let's get started the items you're going to need for this project are going to be the sega saturn You're gonna need the Finmer Duo ODE. You're gonna need the micro SD card or an SD card if you're planning on doing the ODE mount. And you're also gonna need a set of tools to open up the system. This is all we're gonna need for this project. I'll link the items in the description below. We're gonna do a quick unboxing of the Finmer ODE Duo. And inside the package itself, you'll find some packing peanuts, the two ribbons for depending on which Sega Saturn version you have, and of course, the board. We're going to focus mainly on the board for this real quick. I'm going to go ahead and set everything aside. Now I'm going to open this up. That way I can give you folks a quick overview of what the board actually looks like. Again, this is the Finrar Duo ODE, which accepts both Sega Saturn versions, the 20 pin and the 21 pin. At the top, you'll see that that's where the micro SD card goes. And on the right, you'll find a two slots, one for the 20 and one for the 21 pin. That's pretty much it. Let's install this guy. We're going to grab our Sega Saturn and we're going to go ahead and open it up. I'm going to show you a quick time lapse of me uh, unscrewing all the screws. If you need a full tutorial on how to open this system up and clean it, make sure you check my previous video on the Sega Saturn. So that way you guys can have a clean system before you even install this ODE. So after we remove all these screws, the one thing I always forget, which I didn't forget this time, was to remove the door in the back. So I'm going to go ahead and flip this system over. And we're going to go ahead and take the little door out from the back here. And now that we took out all the screws, we can go ahead and remove the top of the system. We're going to go ahead and unplug the power from the this drive and we're also going to remove the ribbon from the disk drive as well gently move the ribbon and let's go ahead and remove the disk drive it is screwed down with this sort of ribbon here as well so let's go ahead and unscrew this real quick now it's up to you whether or not you want to hang on to your disk drive unit. I'm going to go ahead and put it somewhere safe, but if you want to toss it and don't plan on using it ever again, that's completely up to you. We're going to put the screw back in here. It's not necessary, but I like to keep it nice and tidy in case I would do want to 
actually install the disk drive in the future. So we're going to go ahead and grab our board. We're going to go ahead and put it between these two pillars here. As you can see, we're going to go ahead and take the power cord and we're going to go ahead and plug it into the board. There's a slot right there at the bottom left. Next, we're going to take the ribbon and depending on which uh, version of the Sega Saturn you have, we're going to go ahead and connect the ribbon into that. Make sure you're gentle, but make sure it's all the way in as well. That's it. Guys, this is all we have to do. All you have to do is insert the actual SD card and you're literally done with this. <laughs> with this installation, it was so easy. It was so awesome. I actually enjoyed it a lot. I'm going to go ahead and tuck the ribbon into this little port here. And that way it doesn't get in the way whenever I'm putting everything back together. So I'm going to go ahead and put the top of the Sega Saturn back on. I hit the reset button by accident because I'm used to the open button being there on the PlayStation. But once I hit the open button, as you can see, it's nice and easy to go ahead and access this micro SD card. So we're going to go ahead and close the lid. And we're going to go ahead and put this system back together. Again, this was incredibly easy. This is all you have to do. Again, I really enjoy the ease of this particular um, install here. So we're going to go ahead and put the screws back together. Once we're done, we're going to go ahead and flip this guy over and we're going to put the little door back on that protects the uh, the battery that we replaced in the previous video. And that's pretty much it. I'm going to give this guy a little wipe before I go ahead and start doing the rest of the setup here. Good Sega Saturn. There's a couple things we're going to need in order for Fanware to work efficiently. Now you can go ahead and boot up the system now that you have the Fanware Duo installed and it'll take you straight to the Fanware menu, which I think is awesome. However, you don't have games. The firmware might be a little bit updated and you also don't have any pictures for those games. And that last portion is completely optional, but it is something I'll cover so that way your Fanware looks good as well. Now, I'm not going to cover where to get these games just because I don't want to get in trouble with the YouTube gods. But if you have any other questions, please free to ask and I'll try to help you the best I can. We're going to start off by going to the official Fanware website, and that is the Fanware-ODE.FR. I'll go ahead and leave a link in the description below for all these items. That way you guys can just click on them and go. From the Fanware website, we're going to go straight to firmware and it should be on the latest version right here and as of this video it was november 11th 2022 it is version 1.5.8 i'm going to go ahead and download this and the next thing we're going to do is cover some of these pictures now there is a great user on reddit his name is Paraboli, and what he ended up doing was creating custom sega saturn fenrir ode covers for you and this is an excellent source to get these. You can always make your own. It actually does tell you on the firmware website how to create uh, actual screenshots. And it tells you that they have to be 128 by 196. It tells you that the, the, they have to be in the screenshot folder in your SD root directory. Each screenshot must be of the same file name of the displayed entry. So basically what it means is the screenshot has to have the same name that you have for the game itself in order to connect itself to the game. So whenever you click on the game, it'll show you a screenshot or the cover of that game, which I think is excellent. So from here, we can go ahead and uh, go to the comments. He does have a Dropbox and you can go ahead and just choose which game you want to go ahead and download covers for. So again, take your pick. The two games that I ended up taking care of here is going to be Resident Evil and Street Fighter Alpha 2. I wanted a 3D game and also a 2D fighter type game. So we're going to go over and download Resident Evil. Boom. We can go and just, you know, take it out like this. It does say that it does have to be in JPG format as well. So make sure you keep that in mind. And then the next game is going to be Street Fighter Alpha 2. That's the next game I'm going to work on. So I'm going to go ahead and hop down here. Grab the J JPG and uh, drop it there as well. My SD card is pretty much taken care of here, but what you should do is go ahead and format it using either the Windows one. The website actually does recommend you use Rufus more than anything, but for the purposes of this video, I'm going to go ahead and just do it here. I am going to use XFAT over FAT32. Again, if you're using Rufus, it is much easier to do a FAT32, and I think it's a more reliable format as well so please uh make your decisions if you're having any issues using xfat switch to fat 32 that should most likely take care of your issue i'm going to go ahead and use xfat for the purposes of this video 
and we're gonna go ahead and format it to the Fenrir Duo, as you can see here. So we're gonna go ahead and start the actual formatting. It should be done, and we should be able to open this now. So all I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna create a folder inside of the SD card. I'm gonna call it Games. I'm gonna take another one and just call it uh, Screenshots. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, put everything in here. So since it does recommend that you use the same name, I'm gonna go ahead and call my Resident Evil cover Resident Evil, and I'm gonna use my Street Fighter Alpha 2 cover. I'm gonna go ahead and name that Street Fighter Alpha 2. So we can go ahead and grab those and throw it into screenshots. I'm gonna go ahead and grab my two games, and I'm gonna go ahead and copy them into my, my actual micro SD card. While it's doing that, we can go ahead and look at the root here, and again, it takes the update duo, go ahead and install this. You don't have to do anything to make the update actually start. The update starts automatically. So now that's pretty much it. We should be good to go. Let's go ahead and take the micro SD card from our computer and install it back into our Fenrir Duo ODE. So this is the menu for the Fenrir Duo ODE. As you can see, it's pretty bare bones, but we're gonna go ahead and hop into options. We're gonna go ahead and enable this. So let's go to on, return to menu, restore from backup, system information, uh, nothing crazy from here. Let's go ahead and go back and we're gonna go into games next. Resident Evil, uh, as you can see, the covers do start there. So that's pretty cool. So we have Resident Evil and Street Fighter Alpha like we discussed earlier. Let's go ahead and run Resident Evil. Went ahead and launched it. Again, this is not edited in any way. This is all real-time loads here. All I'm seeing is a blast screen, but it looks like, okay, it is booting the Capcom intro. Excellent. So it looks like Resident Evil loaded up just fine. Hit start. Okay. Yeah, everything looks good. The sound and everything is uh, all present as far as I can tell. So I'll definitely do some more testing. But for now, it looks like the actual game download and install was a success. So let's go ahead and try Street Fighter to Alpha. It looks like we have the intro for Street Fighter Alpha. It looks like it's switching resolution, so I might have to mess with my Elgato or uh, my Retro Tink to see if we can stop that from happening. Because every time the resolution changes, it looks like it's starting to freak out. But that's, you know, that's beside the point. It looks like the game sounds and works just fine. I'm just jumping into the game for just a little bit just to make sure everything loads. I forgot that disc games and fighting games don't get along. Lots of loading screens to get in there. It's my boy Ken. Going against Zangief. Yeah, I should be done with this uh, particular demonstration here in just a second. I just want to make sure the buttons work as well. That's the one thing I haven't really done is test the buttons out all the way through. Okay, yeah, it looks like everything is working just fine. Okay, sounds good. Looks like our Sega Saturn and our install of the ODE was a success, ladies and gentlemen. So that was the install for the Fenrir Duo ODE for the Sega Saturn. It is by far the easiest install I think we've done since we started this series together. And also one of the shortest videos, I believe, just because of the ease of install for this particular ODE. So if this is something you guys are looking for or needed some information on, hopefully this video was very helpful for you. I am going to make one more video for the Sega Saturn when I go ahead and finish up and get all the accessories that I need. I do want to get a mount for the ODE so that way it sits flush with the system. It makes 
makes it look super clean among other accessories that I will go ahead and talk about whenever I make that video. If this is your kind of thing where somebody goes through and cleans up systems, repairs them if need be, and sometimes even mods them, make sure you hit that subscribe button. That way you're notified every time I post a video. I'll be making a video on the Sega Saturn very soon. Again, thank you so much for joining me and I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.